So in the last lesson, we learned that the moment of inertia of a system of masses rotating about an axis can be given by the formula I is equal to sigma of mi ri square, where mi is nothing but the ith mass at a distance ri from the axis of rotation. Or to simply put, consider this system of masses, and this will make things simpler for you. So let us say this is your system of masses, where you have two masses, so your i changes from one to two only. You could have a third mass also. In that case, i would be one, two, three. So you'll have one, two, and three. Here we have two masses. The axis of rotation is this, and it's going through the center of mass. And the distance of each mass from the center axis of rotation is L by two. So how we'll find the moment of inertia of this system is that we'll say I is equal to mass one into its distance from the axis of rotation, which is L by two, and we square it, plus we take the second mass, which is M only, into the distance from the axis of rotation, which is again L by two squared. And what you get is I is equal to half M L square. Now, let us say the axis of rotation is moved from here to here. And we are asked to find the moment of inertia about this axis of the system. So how do we find that? So we'll go by the formula which we have established over here and we'll say that I is equal to the first mass into its distance from the axis of rotation. And if this is the first mass, we know that its distance from the axis of rotation is zero because axis of rotation is going through it. So we'll say the distance is zero plus the second mass into its distance from the axis of rotation, which now has become L and we square this. And this distance from the axis of rotation is always a perpendicular distance. You've got to remember that. And what you'll find is here, I therefore equals ML squared. So this was one approach for finding the moment of inertia about this axis. Now there's another approach to finding the moment of inertia when the axis of rotation changes and it's called the parallel axis theorem, which says that if you know the moment of inertia around the axis passing through the center of mass, then you can find the moment of inertia around any rotation of axis. So the moment of inertia about any axis is equal to the moment of inertia around the axis passing through the center of mass plus the mass of the system multiplied by the square of the distance by which the new axis of rotation has been shifted from the axis of rotation through the center of mass. So to give you an example, let's take this system of masses only. And what we say is that the moment of inertia when the axis of rotation is through this mass is I is equal to moment of inertia when the axis of rotation was through the center of mass, which we know is half ml square we've calculated, plus the total mass of the system, which here is 2m multiplied by the distance by which the axis of rotation has shifted. You can see that the axis of rotation is shifted by L by two distance. So we'll put L by two and square it. So what you get is I is equal to M L squared. So you can see moment of inertia about any axis can be calculated either using this formula or you could use a parallel axis theorem. So let me go ahead and write that M here is the total mass of the system and H is the distance of new axis from the center of mass and it is the perpendicular distance. Now, so far it's been pretty easy for us to find the moment of inertia of a system of masses because you had two distinct masses rotating around the axis of rotation. Now, let's say if you had a continuous mass rotating about an axis, then how would you calculate the moment of inertia? So let's say you have this as an example where you have a continuous rod rotating about an axis which goes through the center of mass. 
Now here it's not possible to take every tiny mass across the rod and multiply it with the square of the distance from the axis of rotation. It will take a lot of time, a lot of time and still you will not get an accurate result. So what we do is we utilize integral calculus to find the moment of inertia about this axis of rotation. So what we will do is we will take an infinitesimally small piece of mass over here. Let us say this is our dx length mass and its mass is let us say dm really very small and let's say it's at a distance x from the axis of rotation so what you would say is that the moment of inertia on account of this small mass is equal to di is equal to mass which is dm into its distance from the axis of rotation which is x and we square this now if you want to find the inertia across the system what you'll do is you'll integrate both the sides and while you do so you'll notice that you'll have to convert dm into a dx value to do the integration to enable the integration so how do we go about it? is that we know that if mass of the rod is let us say m then this mass corresponds to a length l in which case we'll say the mass dm would correspond to a length L upon M times dm. And this we have said is equal to dx in length. In which case we say that dm is equal to M upon L times dx. And if we substitute the value, or the, the expression for dm over here, what we get is I is equal to M upon L x squared dx with the integration limits changing from minus l by 2 to l by 2 because this we assume is the origin let's say this is the origin in which case this becomes minus l by 2 and this end becomes plus l by 2 so if this is the case then what you'll find is that i that i equals if you solve for this expression i equals 1 12th of m l square now let us say we change the axis of rotation of this rod and bring the axis of rotation to the extreme left so to find the moment of inertia about this new axis over here you could either use integral calculus the way we have used over here the way we have derived over here or you could use the parallel axis theorem and we'll use parallel axis theorem to establish the moment of inertia which would be much easier to do so we say that i about this axis is equal to i through center of mass which is 1 12th of m l square plus the total mass of the rod which is m into the distance by which the new axis of rotation is away from the axis of rotation through center of mass and we can clearly see it's moved by l by 2 so we'll take l by 2 in place of h and square it and what you'll find is that i through this new axis of rotation is equal to one third of m l square and the interesting thing you'll find is that the moment of inertia about this axis of the system of the same rod is much more in fact four times that of this system and the reason for this is you can see that the mass is more mass is distributed away from the axis of rotation in this case compared to this case where it is evenly distributed on the left and right side of the axis of rotation so what's happening is mass being closer to the axis of rotation over here more number of uh, lower values of mr squared compared to this one so it's possible you might not have followed what i just said but just think over it and i think you'll get a, a, a good idea of why this moment of inertia here is four times that of the moment of inertia in this system.